In this video, we're going to talk about the properties of water. So, um, first off, why is water important in terms of life? Well, organisms are 70 to 95 percent water, right? So we're basically a big watery solution. Our blood is a solution of all the important nutrients we need being carried by water. Uh, this is a good example of another characteristic of water. You can notice that water striders standing on water as if the water is a solid. That's because of a property called surface tension. Surface tension is due to the cohesiveness of water. Cohesiveness just means its ability to stick together. And that's because of these partial negative charges on the strongly electronegative oxygens and the partial, partial positive charges on the uh, less electronegative hydrogens, they're giving up, they're having their electrons pulled away from the hydrogens towards the oxygens, and that's causing, it's not a covalent bond, but it is an attraction between different molecules which causes this cohesiveness, the fact of water to act a little bit more like a solid than most liquids. So again, the reason for that is because if we look at electronegativity, this is how much an atom w wants an electron. Uh, oxygen is second only to fluorine in terms of electronegativity. It's going to really badly want to pull electrons in towards it. It just wants them a lot more. We, we tend to see strong electronegative going in this way and going in this way, right? And up here we have a very electronegative bond. When it forms a bond with hydrogen, hydrogen is not electronegative at all. It's going to be more likely to give up its electrons. So when they form an OH bond, we tend to see this negative charge on the oxygen, positive charge on the hydrogen. Another important uh, atom that forms a polar bond is nitrogen, especially when nitrogen forms with hydrogen. But you can see 3 to 3.5, it's not nearly as polar a bond as the oxygen-hydrogen bond will be. So here's what the uh, electron configuration looks like between hydrogen and oxygen. And again, the electronegativity due to that big difference between hydrogen and oxygen and again forming these hydrogen bonds and again this ability of water to stick to itself is cohesiveness so it's sticky that's why freshman year I remember we put drops on pennies you could get about 25 drops of water on a penny because of its ability to want to stick to itself okay that's important but another reason it's important is not just surface tension or putting drops on pennies it's really important because water is going to want to stick to, to itself and stay in liquid form so carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide methane other similarly sized molecules are all gases at earth's average temperature water is still a liquid that's important because if water were a gas we'd be Venus, we'd have no life. Uh, if water was in solid form, we'd be Mars, we'd just have ice. So you need to have, on a planet, water in liquid form for life to, to live and thrive. So this cohesiveness of water allows that at 55 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius, our average temperature. Another property of water that's really useful for life and making it a solvent of, of life is that it's a good adhesive. It's got adhesive properties, meaning it dissolves other substances. It sticks to other things, just like adhesive tape sticks, sticks to substances. Again, this polarity, these charges, mean that it's going to stick to ions that are bound in ionic salts and dissolve them. So salts dissolve, electrolytes dissolve, minerals dissolve, and even many molecules that have polar regions on them dissolve in water, like this ammonia. Nitrogen, again, we said is slightly negatively charged compared to these hydrogens in ammonia. So it's going to dissolve other substances, other polar molecules. Here's a polar molecule, protein. Protein has a lot of charged regions on it. They're going to stick to water, and that's going to allow proteins to dissolve in water. So milk, egg whites, these are examples of protein solutions, proteins dissolved in water. If something does dissolve in water, we tend to call it hydrophilic. Hydro meaning water, phila meaning a lover of, a lover of water. So anything with a lot of Ionic bonds or polar covalent bonds is going to tend to be hydrophilic. 
This is a fat molecule, three fatty acids. We call it also a triglyceride. And if you notice here, it's mostly carbon and hydrogen backbones, right? Carbon and hydrogen are relatively low in their electronegativity, and they're also fairly close to each other. So there's not a lot of pulling of electrons from one to another. So this is what we call a nonpolar molecule. And if it's nonpolar, it's also going to be what we call hydrophobic, water fear or water hatred. So fats, oils, greases, waxes, these are all long hydrocarbon chains. There's no polar regions in them, no polar covalent bonds. So they tend to not have charge, and they don't dissolve well in water. You know that if you've ever tried to clean greasy or fatty dishes, right? They just don't that does not come off in water alone. So some properties of water. First off, water has what we call a high specific heat. What this means is it takes a lot of energy to heat water up one degree Celsius, and it takes the removal of a lot of energy to cool it down one degree Celsius. This is important because water then helps to moderate Earth's average temperature. Some of this is due to, the, again, that cohesiveness, the fact that water sticks to itself. So to get those molecules to move faster against each other requires more energy. To, to increase the kinetic energy in there, you have to apply more energy. Um, so this is important because Earth, again, has a high specific heat being mostly water. So Earth's average temperature varies very little compared to other planets day versus night, season versus season, we see some change in temperature. We don't see a lot because water tends to hold on to those temperatures and maintain temperatures in a relatively narrow range. So again, much more moderate, much more conducive to life. Again, high specific heat, this just means again the amount of energy to heat up or drop the temperature of one degree Celsius. And you can see water compared to all these other substances, much, much higher. Heat of vaporization. This is the energy it takes to go from liquid to gas form. In this case, from water, liquid water, to water vapor, okay, evaporation. And in the case of water, because it is, again, cohesive, because the hydrogen bonds cause it to stick to itself, it takes a lot more energy to go from liquid form to gaseous form. And that energy can be used to pull energy away from a system. And this is important because, again, it can help cool things off through evaporative cooling. So bodies of water do not get as hot as land because of the evaporative cooling effect. Individuals that can pant or sweat will stay a lot cooler than areas around them that do not have that evaporative cooling effect. So in terms of maintaining homeostasis, this is important. This high heat of vaporization allows organisms to stay cool through evaporative cooling. So a couple of examples. Here's a body of water, right? And you can see here, this is actually when it's starting to cool off and you can see the condensation. The water is a lot warmer than the air. In, in the fall, the air temperatures cooled off and the water stayed warmer. Here's Andre Agassi, he's playing tennis, sweating again to stay cool. And that evaporative cooling is allowing him to play tennis in, you know, uh, in, in a very hot climate. And again, this occurs because when things evaporate, also the, the fastest moving molecules tend to evaporate first, leaving the slower molecules behind, hence the evaporative cooling effect. All right, another property of water, these hydrogen bonds, when they're in liquid form and they're constantly breaking and reforming, are, are packed tighter together. And when they stop and solidify and form a solid, they actually increase in distance. This is very unusual, a very unusual property of matter, that it's got a uh, higher density in liquid form than in solid form. So what does this mean? This means that water in its solid form has less lower density so that it floats as a solid. So here's a good example. When water freezes, uh, oceans and lakes don't freeze solid because that ice floats to the top and forms an insulating barrier, sort of a greenhouse, and allows the water underneath not to freeze solid. Here's an example of ice floating in a beaker. If you freeze benzene, it sinks. When you freeze most molecules, they sink. Water floats, and again, this allows for uh, water to not only uh, protect 
cold buys water from freezing solid, but as water heats and cools, it tends to rise and fall, and it circulates uh, as it forms, goes to freeze, it comes back up to the surface and helps bring up nutrients and circle nutrients in, in aquatic ecosystems. Here's another example of water. Again, in ice, less dense liquid form, more dense than steam. Obviously, they break apart. It's got the lowest density of the three states of water. But this is just a brief introduction to some of the properties of water and why water is so important for living things. And there's a guy fishing on ice. That's it.